Hey fam, after the several videos I did on Scarlet Lady, let us discuss things you need to know before booking the Scarlet Lady. And because the ships are so similar, it should also apply to those ships as well. First of all, Virgin Voyages. It's an all-inclusive cruise experience. That means the food, non-alcoholic beverages, and entertainment. I'm going to give you a brief overview and then go into further details later on. They have group fitness classes. I know people do not like to work out, but there are a population of people that like to work out on their vacations. And so because they like, know they like to eat and they like to work out. So they have group fitness classes. These group fitness classes are free. When you go to other cruise lines, group fitness classes are not free. Maybe they'll have Zumba and Scarlet Lady did have Zumba, but they may not be free. And so they were free on Scarlet Lady. Not only that, then also then if you want private lessons, training, weight training, a trainer with you, then you would have to pay additional cost for that. But group fitness classes, you can go and train all you want. And so therefore Wi-Fi is also included. You know, a lot of ships, Wi-Fi is not included in the cost. So you get Wi-Fi in the cost of your fear for the cruise and no kids are allowed. Maybe you're an individual, you're tired of kids running around the ship. Um, it may get on your nerves sometimes. And so you feel like you're having to fight for the pool area. So then this kind of cruise ship would be the cruise for you. The minimum age for Scarlet Lady and Virgin Voices in general is 18. That's the minimum age. So you will not find any because it does not matter if you have children and they're going to be staying in a room with you. There are because the minimum age is 18. There are no kids clubs. And so there is no children allowed on these type of ships. And so before I go on family, can you do me a favor? Can you like, comment and subscribe? Click on the notification bell to be informed of future posts. It will greatly help my channel and I thank you in advance for doing so. So let's go on, food and drinks. So there's 20 plus eateries on Scarlet Lady. And so not all are sit down restaurants. And so you may hear this number and you think, oh, well, 20 plus equivalent to what would be considered like a specialty restaurant on other cruise lines. But not all are sit down restaurants because they are included in what would be called like the they don't have a buffet also. So it'd be like a food court. And so there's places where you can go in their version of a food court and get food and there'll be tables that you can sit down, but it is not a traditional sit down served by a waiter restaurant. Um, since there is no buffet, um, the restaurants in the galley are great as well. Um, so if you want just something to have, you don't want to be able to sit, have to sit down in a restaurant, you have that option. You don't have to book um, any of those sit down restaurants if you don't want. If you just want to go up there, what they call the galley or what would be considered almost like a food court, then go up there, have some food. Um, there's a place that's 24 hours. You can get breakfast 24 hours if you want to. And so you can still do that. Even though the other places are free and all you really do have to do is get a reservation. If you don't get a reservation, this is the thing. Um, so sometimes you feel like you you can't get a reservation and maybe the restaurant that you really wanted is booked up. I saw people standing online for restaurants. So that goes to show you that even though there's nothing left in the app because you can book through the app. You could still go online and see if you could get into a restaurant if you want to. So just just don't give up on the restaurant. Say, oh, it's booked. I can't go. Go online and maybe they'll make a room for you. You never know. And so they have pizza. They had ice cream parlor on there. Um, they had places for snacks and desserts free of charge are included in the cross of your cruise. You, this cruise lines you go, you just want a cookie and there's a charge for that. You want just something sweet and then you have to be charged for that. And so for the fact they have all these things that you have 
included in the cost of the cruise is just so great. And so one of the things that you need to know, there are no drink packages. And so sometimes when you are booking, there may be a deal like a tab, $300 bar tab, they would call it. And so this would be what you would use for your alcoholic beverages. And so there's no traditional drink packages like others, but a lot of times when they are offering deals and sales, you could get $300, maybe up to $600 um, bar tab, and then you can use that for the, for the course of your cruise. And the, the thing about it is, if you don't use it, you lose it. So don't think that they give you this $300 or $600, and then you go to the expect getting the difference in your pocket. If you don't use it, you will lose it. And so it's just kind of something just to kind of pull you in to say like, okay, we don't have a drink package, but you get at least a bar tab so that you can use it as is. And so, as I said before, sodas are included. And so sodas are included. A lot of places, sodas are not included. No other ship I've been on that sodas were included. Um, juice is usually included for breakfast on a lot of ships. So you may get your orange juice and you may get your apple juice, um, but it's usually just lemonade, iced tea, water. If you want tea, it would be just your basic tea. But the fact that at least you have soda included, but anything in a can, say for example, like a Red Bull. If they had a Red Bull, for example, um, you have to pay. And so there's a difference. So even though it seems like an all-inclusive experience, not everything is free. There are also additional charges. There was, for example, a place that you can get coffee from. Now you would use your bar tab for that, but if, for example, they did not have a bar tab, or if, for example, you just used up all your bar tab already and you just felt like, I just wanna have some coffee, that place for coffee, you would be charged extra because they take the money out of your bar tab. Just let, let you know that from now. Now, also, there may be some upcharges in some of the restaurants. It's very rare, um, but for example, like this, a nice steak or what have you, there may be a little upcharge, but it's really far and in between. There's so many things that you can eat. You don't have to be charged or you don't have to go and pay extra for anything. There's so much good food and I showed it in the vlogs. I went to several of the restaurants. I went to The Wake, which was like a brunch place, a steak place. I went to the, the Mexican restaurant. I went to kind of like a test kitchen that they had there as well. Um, I went to the Italian restaurant. Um, and so I went to a, a good amount of their sit down restaurants and for the most part, I was not disappointed. Overall, when I look at the restaurants overall, the meals were kind of good. They really were good. There were some items that was like exquisite. And the one thing that I like about these cruise ships is that they say that there's an executive chef per restaurant, right? And so when I look at other ships, they have one culinary person for all of the restaurants and all of the food. But to be able to have one person that's designated for the Italian restaurant or for the Wake or for, you know, the Mexican restaurant. So they can really hone in on the food for that restaurant and become maybe a specialist for that type of food. I thought that was really good. And so that is the food and the drinks. If you have any questions regarding that, just let me know in the comments. And so now the entertainment. The entertainment, they do have the things that you would find on other ships. Um, not so much risky. I don't think like because it's an adult. See, some people think adult cruise and they think risque on everything. Like everything is just going to be over the top. Everything is just going to be risque. Um, so I didn't think that. So, for example, they had trivia, you know, just playful trivia and people were participating in the trivia. Um, you could book private karaoke rooms. And so if you like karaoke and you want to do that, you could book a private karaoke room for yourself and for your for your family and for your friends or whoever you came on the cruise ship with. The one thing you need to know about casinos. Now, they did have like a high roller um, room there 
but the casino was very small. So for those individuals who love gambling, you go on the cruise ship, you just want to gamble away. First of all, the casino was small compared to a, a lot of other cruise ships that I've seen. And not only that, it was not open 24 hours. So even on the days where we were not at port because this ship that I was on, um, because of the weather, I, we only got to do one port. So there was some days where it was a sea day and it was a ghost town in there. The machines were off. It Nothing was going on. No activity. Nobody was there. You, and so I guess you would have to look on the schedule to see when they actually would open. So it was not 24 hours on sea days like a lot of other cruise lines do. And so if you're an individual that like that, don't be disappointed. Virgin Voyages is not investing as much in their casino like other places do. They're really pushing the casino, casino deals, trying to get you in their jackpots, things of that nature. And so... Virgin Voyages is not the type of cruise ship that if you want to just gamble the day away, you're not going to have that there. And so they have different types of shows. The good thing about Scarlet Lady that I experienced is they had shows that they developed you couldn't really never see anywhere else. And so I know that some cruise lines, they will have like Broadway type shows, right? Not only Broadway type shows, Broadway shows at sea. For example, NCL will have a Broadway show that maybe either is still on Broadway or was on Broadway at one time and now you can see it. They have shows that they have put in place, cabaret type shows, shows that you could have a dinner and a show at the same time. And the thing is some of these things now they book up and so you have to make sure that you reserve it on the app because they will book up because there's limited space in terms of some of these spaces when it comes to these cabaret type shows where you can eat and also see the show. Um, they have bands around the ship. The music was so great. The, I was not disappointed. The band, the main band was, and it was in a common area so you could just walk past it. They were just rocking. Um, there was a husband and wife duo one was playing guitar and they were singing they were great and so i enjoyed the singers as well and so i expect great music right i expect great music and the music was great the singers were phenomenal in the cabaret shows they had a solo woman show one time that i went to and so i thought that it was all great so they had a sail away party you know a lot of cruise ships have sail away parties in the sailaway party, unfortunately, because of the weather was so horrible, leaving from Miami, we could not go outside. And so they tried to do something inside. And with that sailaway party inside, it was almost like just an introduction of the main entertainment staff that was going to be there on hand. And with that in place, then they also was just going around and giving champagne to everybody that was there. And so it was inside. And so it wasn't the, the great celebrity party that we used to, but I felt like they made up for it on the Scarlet Night Party. So they have deck parties. And so for those individuals who like deck parties, they had a pajama party, they had a Scarlet Night Party. And so they definitely have different events. Because the weather was horrible, they try, sometimes things would have to be canceled or they would try to bring it inside if they could. If not, then they would just kind of cancel it off altogether. And so, unfortunately, there were some things that I tried to go to and it was, it was just canceled. For whatever reason, it was just canceled. And so, no real reason. It was just either on the schedule and then next thing it was not on the schedule or because of the weather you went out went outside and you're like yeah it's got to be canceled because of the weather because there's nobody out here and so just just know that um they will have a schedule together but if it's the weather sometimes they will accommodate and try to change it but other times it just will be canceled so you may be disappointed that you won't be able to have that on your cruise ship even though you may have heard somebody else had a great time on their cruise ship going to that particular event and so also, there is also the Wi-Fi. Now, I told you that they have Wi-Fi, but I was talking to a couple, and even though I had the premium Wi-Fi included in my package, 
they did not have the premium Wi-Fi. I didn't even know there was levels. And so they went to go and purchase the premium Wi-Fi package. And so just so I feel like in my overall view, it is all inclusive to a limit. Because of the fact that, as I said, like if you wanted certain like things that were in cans, that would be an extra charge. If you, if you didn't get the premium Wi-Fi, obviously that's an extra charge. When you go onto a resort on land, all of the alcohol is included, right? Anything, anything you want to drink, teas, didn't matter, juices, alcohol, and any top top sheer top tier liquor, whatever it is, all of it is included. Here, you get a bar tab. And so now what do you think about that? Do you like the bar tab situation? Because there's some cruise lines, you know, they do give you a limit on how many drinks you can choose a day or drink a day. They give you this limit, and I feel like some people try to tempt themselves to be able to reach that limit. And so with the bar tab, you kind of, and the drinks weren't that expensive, it wasn't overly expensive. Um, and so at the same time, remember everything's included. And so with the bar tab, you're being charged for the drink itself. So because all tips are already included, if it's an $8 drink, is eight dollars there's no eight dollars plus tip tax you know things of that nature you know it's eight dollars and so saying that then that if it's three hundred dollars for example that may go a long way eight dollars ten dollars maybe a fifteen dollar drink and so if it's a short cruise like i was on if you do a four-day cruise or something of that nature three hundred dollars may go a long way especially if you're already getting free sodas um, so you have other things that you can drink besides alcoholic beverages. So $300 may really go a long way. So think about that. And so I thought that in general, it was a great experience. Um, one thing I had with my last video, debarkation day was a nightmare. I just feel like in good times when everything is good, they are great. I, I, I enjoyed the experience. I enjoyed the entertainment. I enjoyed the food overall. Um, I think when, when everything is good, they are great. But I feel like when some things are not good, when there's some crisis going on, um, when there's some delay and when there's some frustrations that we as passengers have to deal with, they're not as good at communicating and then, and so that's why I watched that last video. They're not as good as communicating and they're not as good as just kind of being like all hands on deck. I just felt like um, when we were just frustrated, just wanted to get off the ship and things of that nature, no one was really organizing. No one was really giving like constant reminders or constant like feedback of what's happening. Um, and people, I missed my, my flight or I could have missed my other flight when I rescheduled. But thank, thank goodness that was delayed. And so when it's good, it's good. But I feel like when it's bad, they didn't handle it properly. So look at it for yourself. Go on it. See what you think about it. Let me know in the comments if you do. Uh, the Scarlet Lady or one of these other ships. But I thought in general it was a good experience. Would I do it again? I would do it again. Um, because of that that horrible debarkation, I probably would try to really look and see if when the weather is good, obviously you can book and see it far in advance. So maybe if there's a good deal and that they have and it's, and it's like, okay, I know that the weather is going to be really good that weekend. Maybe I'll just like, just do another cruise because I did not go get to go to Bimini. I've never been to Bimini, but I would like to see what their private area is they're a nice club that everybody see, uh, likes to go to and it's on the agenda usually it's, it's excluded all the time unless there's an issue like mine with weather where we could not go to the bahamas and so we only ended up going to cozumel and so i would like to go there um and check it out and experience it for myself 
so i think i will book another cruise hopefully i don't have the same situation that i had the last time but um try it for yourself let me know thank you for watching this video until next time happy travels